Jesus, bow our heads to pray. Then Jesus, please bless this Sabbath day, helping us to come through another week. Please help us to learn something new to share with others. Jesus, in name I pray. Amen. Hi, I am Elon Scott. And I am Emma Scott. And we are here to bring you this morning's inspiration. We are from the Good News Chapel, St. Augustine. We hope you enjoy and sing along. Happy Sabbath, boys and girls. Today's lesson is entitled, In and Out of Prison. Have you ever known someone who was in trouble? What did you do to help them? Well, Peter's friend prayed and prayed and prayed for him until something amazing happened. 
Our memory verse is taken from Acts chapter 12 verses 5 which reads, Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. King Herod rubbed his hands together. He would do away with all the people who believed in Jesus. He would take care of that preacher, Peter, next. He called his guards. Guards! Guards! And he instructed them to go get Peter. When they came to Peter, Peter went quietly with the soldiers who came to arrest him. When they arrived at the prison, Peter was chained to two soldiers, one on each side. The chain was so tight that it pinched Peter's arm, but Peter did not complain. He sat down on the cold stony floor. He was tired. So he lay his head on the floor and closed his eyes and went to sleep. The news about Peter arrest quickly went through the city. Many of the believers hurried to John Mark's house. They often prayed together there. So it seemed like the place to pray for Peter. The believers prayed and prayed late into the night. Back in the prison, a bright light suddenly shone in Peter's cell. An angel appeared and touched Peter on his shoulder. Quick, get up, the angel said, and his chains fell off. But put on your sandals, put on your coat, and follow me. Peter did as he was told, but he felt like he was dreaming. Peter and the angel passed between a group of soldiers and came to the iron gates that led to the streets. The gates opened by itself and Peter and the angels walked out of the prison together. Then the angel disappeared. Peter closed his eyes and opened them again. He really was in the streets. It was not a dream. It's true, he whispered to himself. The Lord sent an angel to help me. Peter hurried to John Mark's mother's house and knocked at the door. There was a servant by the name of Rhoda and she heard the knock on the door. She heard the voice, but instead of opening the door, she ran right back into the house. Peter is at the door, she shouted. Peter's friend looked at Rhoda. That's crazy, they said. It's not possible. It's me, it's me, Peter said. Peter began knocking again. When the people finally opened the door, they were astonished. Someone grabbed Peter inside quickly. They listened eagerly to Peter as he told them what the Lord had done for him by sending an angel that led him out of prison. The believers laughed and cried with joy as they listened to Peter. As they listened, they said, Praise be to God. And they prayed for Peter and prayed for what was done. They praised the Lord for hearing and answering their prayer. The message we can take away from today is that In the family of God, we pray for each other. So as we go through this week, let us remember that God answers our prayers. So when in trouble, 
we can pray. Enjoy the rest of your Sabbath, boys and girls. Until next week, bye. Hi, everyone. Welcome to this week's primary lesson study. Today, we will look at the silent battle. Our memory verse says, How good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. Psalms 133 verse 1. Listen to this. Have you ever felt so excited that you couldn't sleep? That wouldn't be a school night, right? Or have you ever woken up extra early on an extra special day? That's how it may have been the day that the army of Israel marched for the first time around Jericho. Long before daybreak, the Israelite soldiers and priests arose. After a hurried breakfast, the soldiers dressed for battle. Soon, they lined up behind the golden ark of the covenant. Four priests in spotless white robes stood ready to lift the poles of the ark to their shoulders. When Joshua, the leader of Israel, appeared, he encouraged all the people. March around, march around, march around, march around. God had told Joshua, the leader of Israel, and today was the day they were going to start. So everyone in the community of Israel was excited. The four priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant stand here. Joshua instructed. Quickly and carefully, the priest obeyed. Seven priests with trumpets come stand in front of the ark. An armed guard must go ahead of the priest and the ark. Joshua commanded again. The real God will follow the ark. Joshua then explained that when the priests blew their trumpets, everyone would start marching, but they must not give a war cry or raise their voices. You see, a war cry was meant to frighten the enemy. Why do you think Joshua didn't want the Israelites to make a war cry? It was because everyone was supposed to rely on God. Don't say anything until the day that I tell you to shout. Joshua reminded them. Their heads nodded silently. Then the long parade marched away. Armed soldiers led the way. Behind them came seven priests blowing ram's horn trumpets. Then came the priest carrying the Ark of the Covenant, followed by the rest of the army. As the Israelites approached Jericho, they saw that the city gates were tightly closed. They knew that the people of Jericho were watching. They looked out their windows at the top of the wall. When the priests rested their trumpets a few for just a few minutes, the only sound was the tramp of hundreds of feet. The parade marched all the way around Jer Jericho. Then, silently, the Israelites went back to camp. The next day, the same parade left the Israelite camp. They marched around Jericho, first soldiers, and then seven priests playing trumpets. Next, priests carrying the ark, and finally the rest of the soldiers. The trumpets blared. The soldiers marched, and no one said a word. Each soldier knew that he was helping, just by marching and not saying a word. The same parade wound its way around Jericho on the third day, and the fourth day, and the fifth and the sixth. At sunrise on the seventh day, the long parade of soldiers and priests once more left the Israelite camp. 
quietly they moved toward Jericho. The walls of the great city looked higher than ever. The parade circled the city once more, but they did not return to camp as they had done on the days before. Instead, the soldiers and priests marched around the city again and again. Continuously, they marched seven times. They marched around. Nobody spoke. Nobody shouted. Nobody stepped out of the parade. Everyone wanted to help by working together as Joshua had instructed them. Then the parade stopped. The priest put the trumpets to their lips and sounded a mighty blast. Joshua commanded the people to shout. The soldiers threw back their heads and shouted with all their might. That's when the completely unexpected, the absolutely positively impossible happened. With a deafening rumble, the walls of Jericho gave way and fell down. The Israelites rushed into Jericho and took the city. God had given Jericho into Israel's hand. The victory was God's, but the Israelites had their part to play. They had worked together as God and Joshua had instructed. Are you willing to work together with your church family to do something good for God? When God is working with you, you and your church family will do great things because in God's family, we all work together. Good morning everyone and a happy Sabbath to all. Today's lesson study is entitled, Pray Find the Temple. Has your mom or your dad ever come behind you to go clean your room? Is it a mess with all the clothes all over the floor? and an unmade bed? If that's so, then you can relate to how the temple was before the new king came and cleaned it up. King Joash may have depended on his uncle Joahide too much. It is possible he never learned to do the right thing because it was right. Instead, it's because his uncle told him to. We may never know, but what we do know is that after Jehoiada died, Joash was persuaded to allow the people to worship pagan gods instead of the God of heaven. Things got so bad, in fact, that Joash's own cousin, Zechariah, warned the people that God could not bless them if they rebelled against him. And as a result, the king approved of the murder of Zechariah. How soon Joash had forgotten about how Uncle Jehoiada had saved his life and promoted him to the throne of Israel. But as was the custom, it was soon payback time. After a serious defeat by the Syrian army, during which Joash was injured, the king was murdered in his own bed by two of his officials. This was done to avenge the death of Zechariah. The worship of the true God continued to be neglected through four generations of kings. But finally, Joshua's great-great-great-grandson, Hezekiah, became king at the age of 25. His own father has smashed all the artifacts of the temple that were used for worship and closed the doors. Then, he had set up altars on every street corner in Jerusalem so the people could worship idols. Hezekiah must have watched his father do these things, and an uncomfortable distance must have been created between them since they didn't think alike. The father hated God, and the son quietly loved God. The country was in a mess. 
Jerusalem was attacked again and again by hostile armies who killed the young men and captured the young women and children and took them away as hostages. These were horrifying years and all because God's people had tried to copy the worship of those other countries rather than staying true to him. But finally King Hezekiah came to power. He determined to make things right again. The first thing he had to do was to ask the priests to re rededicate themselves to the Lord's work. Listen to me, Levites, Hezekiah called to the priests. Consecrate yourselves now and consecrate the temple of the Lord, the God of your ancestors. Remove all defilement from the sanctuary. Hezekiah and the priests determined to repair the temple to show their love and respect for God. The temple had been located and unused for years. Everything that had been used for the worship of God was broken or stolen. Things used for the worship of false gods lay strewn on the floor, but within two weeks, the temple was ready to be dedicated to God once more. The mess was gone, the floors were swept clean, the marble shone, new furniture was in place. Now all was ready in the courtyard in preparation for the great celebration of dedication. And what a celebration it was. There was a huge crowd that stayed nearly all day. Throughout the temple, groups of priests played harps and cymbals as the people tore the beautiful building. Then it was time for the great sacrificial offerings, like those their ancestors had presented to God in the desert. Seven young bulls and seven rams were killed as the first offering. Then the priests placed their hands on the heads of seven male goats and symbolically transferred the sins of the people to the goats that were then sacrificed. Finally, seven male lambs were offered to the Lord. The lambs represented the Messiah, the Lamb of God, whose death would save them. The huge crowd began to sing praises to God. Some of the priests blew their trumpets along with the singing. Other instruments accompanied the singing as well. They continued this praise through the day until the entire offering was consumed. Then they brought their own offering, 600 bulls, 3,000 sheep, and 3,000 goats. They had a joyful celebration with their friends while worshiping God. The sense of peace that comes from honoring and praising God was felt once again in Jerusalem. Today's mission story comes from Taiwan, and it's told by a little girl named Lisa who is eight years old. The title is, God Answers My Prayers. I live in a loving Christian home in Taiwan. My father is a pastor and my mother is a pastor's wife. I have two little brothers and we live with my grandparents. I want to tell you how God answers my prayers. When I was in the first grade, my school organized a special sports day. This was my first sports day and I wanted to participate in the running and jumping activities. But I go to a public school. So the sports day was on the Sabbath. I prayed to God. Dear God, I said, please do something so that I can attend the sports day. I told mother that I wanted to run and jump with the other students on sports day. Don't worry, mother said. God will find a way to make you happy. The next day, mother and grandmother took me on a picnic. We had so much fun eating outside and I was so happy. Look, said mother, God has found a way to make you happy. I laughed with joy. Mother was right. God had found a way to make me happy. Then God answered my prayer. 
this year the school sports day was held on a Friday and I was so happy that I could run and jump with all the other children. God listened to my prayers and answered them. God answers many kinds of prayers. Every time I take a test at school, I close my eyes and pray before I start. I ask God for help. Dear God, I say, please help me with this test. Please help me to be calm and to focus. I pray because I want to make God happy by getting good grades. God listens to my prayers and I am able to glorify Him with good grades. My parents and I are so grateful to God. I was so sad when my grandmother passed away. She did so many things for me. My family is Rukai, an indigenous people group in Taiwan. And grandmother wove a traditional Rukai backpack for me. It looks beautiful on my back, especially when I dress up in traditional Rukai clothing. I liked to help grandmother. She leaned on my arm for support while she prepared dinner in the kitchen. My brothers and I sang her favorite songs to her. She gave us big hugs to show us that she was pleased. When grandmother fell ill, I went to her bed bedroom first thing after school and asked whether she needed warm water to drink. I liked to bring her whatever she asked for. I sat next to her bed and prayed for her not to be in pain. I was so sad when grandmother died. I prayed to God for comfort and strength and he answered me. I realized that I should not lose hope and that grandmother had just fallen asleep. I will meet her again when Jesus comes. I pray that God will always protect me and my family and he will. He always answers my prayers. Hello everyone, welcome to another craft session. I hope you had a wonderful week. Today we are learning about taking care of our teeth. The reason why I'm doing that is because earlier this year when I visited my dentist, I realized that my teeth were beginning to decay. And it wasn't because I wasn't taking care of them, but just because I was doing things that I thought were right. Um, I just did them the wrong way. And so I realized that I had a lack of basic knowledge. So I decided that today I would use the experience and the, the learnings that I got and share through the craft and through a message from my friend, dental surgeon, Dr. Pulois Utley. Okay, so let's begin. So first we would use our paper, our pre-cut paper, making sure that it can fit into our Ziploc bag. And we would create, we would draw a mouth and teeth. Now I actually did this in pencil, so I'll just use my black marker to trace it over. And you can do that as well. Draw it first in pencil, and then trace it over with your black marker because I'm not an artist, so I had to do it that way. All right. All right, so those are the outer lips. Okay, so here we have the outline of the lips, and now we'll do the teeth. And now we will create the tongue. Okay, so we have our outline and now using our red marker, we color in the lips.
And of course, if you don't have a red marker, you're free to use a crayon or a colored pencil, anything that you have available. Feel free to do the coloring with that. And now we'll color the tongue in pink. Okay, so that's it for our drawing. Next, we'll put the drawing aside and we'll get our oil and one of our Ziploc bags. What we'll do is pour approximately two tablespoons of clear oil, it can be baby oil or clear cooking oil, into our bag. Then we can use anything that will provide movement, anything, when I say anything I mean like, um, well I'm using glit glitter dust, just pour a little bit inside there. If you don't have glitter, feel free to use confetti or even paper punch outs once they can move in the oil. All right. Next, we would lay this flat, but holding the, the neck of the bag up so that the oil doesn't leak out. And we'd squeeze the air out of the bag. At the same time, we'll make sure that we have movement with our confetti, glitter, or whatever we're using. All right. So that seems pretty okay. So we would then put this first bag into the second bag. And try to get it as flat as possible. All right, and this is an activity that, activity that can be used to teach our younger ones how to brush their teeth like the concept of brushing your teeth. What are you doing when you use uh, the emotions that the dentist is going to tell us about so that they would understand better what they are doing while they're doing it. All right, so that seems to be flat enough. So last but not least, well not last, but we would slip the paper behind the bag with the confetti I keep saying confetti, glitter paper, but whatever you use. All right. And now we can see that our teeth and mouth is difficult to see behind all the glitter. So what the activity would show is that you'd use your toothbrush and try to get the glitter away from the teeth so that that mouth is as clean as possible. Now it's not going to be 100% um, clean, but the little ones will understand the concept of brushing the teeth. Use circular motions to try and keep the glitter away from their teeth. All right. So this is the idea. This is our craft. And now we we'll listen as Dr. Polois Atley tells us a little bit more about caring for our teeth and our mouths. Hello, my name is Dr. Polois Atley and today I will be spending a few minutes talking to you about healthy teeth. So we all have teeth. Why do we have teeth? They help us smile, they help us in forming our words when we speak, and they do a very important job of helping us chew or break down the food when we're eating to start the digestion process in our mouths. Why should we brush our teeth? When should we brush our teeth? And how should we brush our teeth? So, why do we need to brush our teeth? Yes, we want to have clean, smelling, fresh breath, but apart from that, we want to remove something called plaque. Now plaque is a sticky layer that forms on the teeth when you eat and it has bacteria in it. So the longer it sits or stays on our teeth, that's when the damage can occur. And if it is left there for a prolonged period of time, it forms something called calculus, which is hard and cannot be brushed off with the teeth with a toothbrush anymore, right? So brushing keeps our teeth clean and keeps our breath fresh. 
and when should we brush our teeth? So we have a nice two time two rule, right? So you wanna brush for two, two times a day for two minutes, right? So we're brushing in the morning and we must brush at night. It's very important for two minutes. And you should be brushing with a soft brush. I know most people don't like these soft brushes, but that is the better brush to use. Using a small amount of toothpaste, a pea-sized amount on your brush, and you start by forming circular actions on the teeth. So I have my model here. So you're forming circles. All right, so you start at the front if you wish. You come around to the side. When you're on the side, you can angle that to brush. Still doing your circles, so you can just get in easier. When you're doing the bottom, again, we angle 45 degrees towards the gum line, and that just helps you. You're doing that. So once we get the outside, we get the inside, top and bottom. And then we also want to ensure that we get in the inside where your tongue will touch. And again, we always just doing those circles. And then you remember to scrub your tongue, right? So that's our brushing. So two by two rule, two times a day, two minutes, right? For the brushing. All right, so additional steps that we can take to keep the teeth clean, we can utilize floss, all right? So I like this brand, Reach. So some people find frost shreds or it's thick, so I find this one doesn't give you that as a lot. Right, so you have your string floss, or if you wish, you could use your floss on the handle. Either one, you, whichever is your preference, right? So, so once you complete your brushing, which should be, your flossing, sorry, which should be done before your brushing, right? So you floss everything, and then you go ahead and you brush with your soft brush. You don't want to damage the teeth, right? So then we have additional things that you can do. We have our mouthwashes, which can be used to kill bacteria, keep the breath fresh, right? So if you choose to use a mouthwash, you can utilize it morning, evening, or you don't have to use one. It's a personal choice, right? So in addition to whatever cleaning you will do at home, you need to have a professional cleaning done, right? So it's good to visit your dentist at least once for the year, Every six months is recommended. So you go in, you will have your checkup done, you we'll check, make sure there's no cavities. Um, if you come once a year, we catch things when they're small. Don't we wait till they get large problems, right? All right, so we we'll take care of our teeth, right? So two times two rule with brushing. Two times a day, must brush at night, very important. For two minutes, we use our flossing aids, right? So we have our floss. Very important, we wanna floss every night before we brush our teeth. If we don't floss, we always leave things behind cause our toothbrush cannot get down in between the teeth. And we want to visit our dentist, keep things nice and healthy. All right, so God bless, healthy teeth for 2021. Good morning, boys and girls. Boys and girls. So, I want to tell you a story from King Solomon. He loved animals and there's an animal that he was talking about to teach us some lessons. Oh, let's go, Taliza. Let's go find out what is this animal. I wonder what it could be. Come with us, boys and girls. Here we go. Up in the tree, Tillis, huh? Is it a squirrel? A squirrel? No, this animal works really hard. Hmm, what works really hard? What is that, Tillis? Ducks are fine, but no, it's in Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 6. I got it! A horse! It's a horse! No, not a, nay, not a horse. He says in Proverbs 6, 6, Learn from this animal and don't be lazy. Mm, okay, I think the I have an I 
have it, I have it. I think it's a bird. Mm, not a bird. This animal don't fly. It crawls on the ground and they work in batches. And my scripture is Proverbs 6, 6, learn from the ants and don't be lazy. Proverbs 6, 6. So Solomon learned two lessons from the ants. He said they are smart and they think about their future. So they work in the summer so they can have food in the winter when it's really cold and there's no fun working. But they would have done so much work. So boys and girls, that's why it's good sometimes that you save up your allowance so you can have things to buy that you like. That's why you treat people with love and you treat them with kindness because you think about tomorrow. How would you like people to treat you? Here's another thing he teaches us about the ants. They don't just work by themselves. They're really tiny, they're small, as you see in the picture, in the video. So they team up and they work together and it helps them to be stronger. Wow. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Talisa, you like that? Good. Let's pray, boys and girls, that we can learn to be as wise as the ants. So even though we might be small, we work together with our friends so we can build things stronger. Let's pray, Jesus, help us to learn from the ants. Help us to think about the decisions we make today because they affect us tomorrow. And also help us to learn to love each other, to have a lot of friends so we can do things together because they become better. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And we want to sing a little song. Yeah. I wrote a little song about the ants. Come on, Teliza, it's dancing time. Let's go, Miss Liz. I want from, from the, the ants, ants how they work to want to learn from the ants to have food in winter. Learn from the ants. I want to learn from the ants and they make things But I don't want ants in my pants for there's a chance it will make me dance to do 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 i want to learn from the ants out i want to learn from the ants i want to learn from the ants i want to learn from the ants but i don't want ants in my pants for there's a chance It'll make me dance to do 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 As we begin this message, I would like for us to take our Bibles and turn to the books, uh, book of 1 Kings chapter 17 verse 1. 1 Kings chapter 17 verse 1. And it says, And Elijah the Tishbite of the inhabitants of Gilead said to Ahab, as the Lord God of Israel lives, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, except at my word. As the Lord God of Israel lives, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, except at my word. I've entitled this message, Try Me. Try me. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing us to come together to discuss your word once more. We ask that you'll be with those who are listening, those who are listening, Lord. I ask that you'll help them to understand what you are trying to get to them today, Lord. 
and help them to understand what you want them to hear. And be with me now as I deliver your word and help them hear your voice and not mine. We thank you for all that you've done and all that you do. Bless us now. Amen. To add a little context to our key text today, the Israelites have turned their backs on God. They have isolated themselves from God. In 1 Kings chapter 30 to 34, you will read that this new king called Ahab became king and he did a lot of evil. Verse 30 of 1 Kings chapter 16 says, He did evil in the sight of the Lord more than all who were before him. And one of the things he did, one of the most iconic things he did, was create this, well not create, but one of the things he did was bring in this new religion, this new religious trend into Israel where they will worship this new false god called Baal. They would, King Ahab would set up an altar for Baal and he would set up a temple for Baal. And because of this, the Israelites have then began to turn their backs on God and they have begun to follow this new religious trend where they would start worshiping Baal, thinking he could control the weather, controlling the crops, or control the food, or they thought that he was God. Obviously, God was furious. God was angry about this. So he sent his trusted servant, Elijah, to the king, and he set, sent him to deliver a message to King Ahab. And as the Lord God of Israel lives, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, except at my word. If you analyze this text carefully, and if you look at it carefully, and, and understand the words being cho the words chosen here and, and how it's being stated. You can almost understand the tone, you can almost hear the tone of voice that Elijah has. And when you read this text carefully, it's clear to see that Elijah is speaking to King Ahab firmly. And in order to speak to this king firmly, he would have to have some form of courage. Now remember, I want you to remember that this is a king, King Ahab. And not only was he a king, but he was a rather evil king. And this evil king was very dangerous. And what I want you to understand is that this king could have, this king had the power to sentence Elijah to death immediately, like on the spot. But that did not faze Elijah. Elijah still walked up to King of Ahab and spoke firmly and gave him the message that God wanted him to hear. Ladies and gentlemen, why wasn't Elijah scared? Because he had, he had courage. He was courageous, if you will. See, Elijah was not scared of what of King Ahab, of his men, his soldiers, because he had faith in God. He had courage. He had the courage to speak to the king this way because he had faith in God. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, what I want you to understand was that Elijah knew who his heavenly father was. And he knew the type of person he was. Elijah knew that he believed in this God that cared for him, 
that loved him unconditionally, that was always looking out for him. He believed in this God so much that he had faith that this God he served wasn't going to let anything happen to him. And so because of this, because he believed, because he had faith, he was able to walk up to the king with courage and deliver the message that God wanted him to hear. Ladies and gentlemen, in the 21st century, we have our own problems, our, our own issues. We have our own reasons why we get anxious and why we step away from the job that God has called us to do. And what I want us to understand today is that once we remember, once we believe that God is with us no matter what, once we believe that God is walking with us no matter what the challenge may be, the courage comes almost automatically. The courage comes almost automatic, automatically because once we remember who God is and how much He loves us, we'll be able to do whatever God requires for us just as Elijah did. Be able to show love to someone who needs to see it or to deliver the word of God to someone who needs to hear it. Or to just be a living testimony for someone who needs the encouragement. Ladies and gentlemen, what I want you to understand today is that yes, it may be difficult. Yes, it may be challenging. And yes, you may be probably scared of showing God's love to someone or, or delivering the word of God to someone who needs to hear it. But what I want you to understand today is that once you believe that God is always by your side and once you have the courage that that once you believe that God will be with you no matter what you'll be able to do whatever you need to complete complete the task that God wants you to complete with courage because the truth of the matter is that God loves you he wants the best for you and he doesn't want, just want the best for you, but he wants the best for someone else. So today, as I close off this message, be like Elijah. Be courageous like Elijah. Be faithful like Elijah was. Stand up and stand tall for Jesus because he'll always see you through.